Good afternoon. My name is Susanna Gurr, and I'm the Managing Director at the BC Center for Employment Excellence. On behalf of my colleagues at the Center, I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. Today's presentation provides an opportunity to learn more about business process management in the nonprofit sector. And we are also showcasing the work and the unique model developed in the Center's recent research and innovation project called Strengthening Business Processes. We will not be starting off with a poll as we normally do today, but we really like you to answer the exit poll at the end of the session. For those of you who are not familiar with the Center, it was created in 2012 with funding from the provincial and federal governments to act as a research and knowledge sharing organization for BC employment service providers and employers. The Center's mandate is not only to do innovative research, but also to find ways to share best practices with BC practitioners and employers and better integrate evidence into practice. We created this webinar series as a way to reach out and connect with practitioners. Through this series, we have highlighted new research by the Centre, but are also tapping into your knowledge and expertise within the employment service community. You're also invited to view the video recordings of previous webinars that we have posted on our website. I now have the pleasure of introducing today's two main presenters. To your left, that's Greg um, and Tim Vici. First, I'd like to introduce Greg Lockwood, my colleague here at the Center. Greg, can you wave again? Hi, everyone. Some of you may already know Greg. Greg is the Center's stakeholder coordinator. And now, Tim, wave again, yep. Tim Vici claims to be semi-retired but remains highly active in leadership and organizing roles in various local not-for-profit organizations, social enterprises, charities, and businesses. Formerly, he was the first CEO of the United Community Services Co-op from 1998 until his retirement from that position in 2011. In previous work, Tim was the Executive Vice President of the United Way of Canada from 1990 through 1994, and Executive Director of the Peace Arch Community Services in White Rock, BC in the 1980s. Tim holds a Master's of Applied Organizational and Community Psychology from the University of Oregon. Okay. We're going to take them off screen now as we um, get into our presentation. As mentioned, today's session is on Business Process Management, or BPM. BPM is an approach to provide high quality services more efficiently and includes areas such as business process redesign, organizational alignment, business strategy, and knowledge management. Significantly, it promotes organizational learning and capacity building. <clears throat> Tim, Greg, and I formed the project team on the Strengthening Business Processes Initiative. We're delighted today to share and describe the model the background, objectives, methodology, and the model that was developed by a group of leaders from nonprofit organizations in BC that provide employment services to specialized populations. I should note that the presentation will last approximately 15 minutes, followed by a brief Q&A session. We encourage you at any time during the presentation to use the questions feature on your dashboards to submit any questions or comments you may have for the presenters during the discussion period. I know we would love to discuss in discussions with you and to exchange thoughts on this area. I'm going to start with a brief story and then hand the microphone over to Greg and Tim. This was a story from the New York Times about two unlikely partners in innovation. The Food Bank for New York City is a nonprofit agency serving over 1.5 million New Yorkers annually, a large-scale operation that acts as a network of more than 1,000 community-based member programs and schools citywide, and at any given time has 15 to 31 tractor trailers out on the street. This translates to a lot of customers they tend to, and the organization's focus isn't just on food. It's about food access, distribution, income support, nutrition, advocacy and research. As the president and CEO of the Food Bank states, we are an anti-poverty organization that uses innovation 
as a tool to solve social problems. In 2011, the leadership team at the food bank partnered with Toyota, TSSC, the Toyota Production System Support Center, to rethink and improve their operations from top to bottom. The partnership began when the food bank started applying Kazan at Food Bank's community kitchen. It developed further over time, particularly in response to the near crippling repercussions of Hurricane Sandy. Toyota donated the thing they do best, their knowledge and skill of process design and truly effective, not just efficient, production processes and operations. The CEO of the food bank said, most people think lean is about efficiency, but it's much more than that. It's about effectively delivering to your customer or client, whatever it is you do. So what can a company that makes cars teach a social service agency? It turns out good operations are good operations, no matter what the product or service is. The Toyota engineers focused on two processes, soup kitchen and the pantry. The kitchen, which can seat 50 people, typically open for dinner at 4 p.m. and when the chairs were filled, a line would form outside. The staff would wait until there was enough space to allow 10 more people in. The average wait time could be up to 90 minutes. The Toyota engineers cut the wait time for dinner from 90 to 18 minutes. They also increased the number of people served. They made three changes. First, they eliminated the 10 at a time system allowing diners to flow in one by one as soon as there was a free seat. The waiting line was set up closer, which reduced the time when people could pick up food trays. There was also a staff or volunteer assigned to responsibility for spotting empty seats so they can be filled quickly. The support from Toyota came at a critical time for the food bank as it was facing increasing demand in a weak economy. The engineers at Toyota worked with the food bank to solve problems and think creatively using tried and true methods that are known to make the best use of resources and people's capabilities and talents. The operational improvements resulting from what may appear to be small changes were huge. Nobody claims BPM is easy. Rethinking one's own processes and developing new habits is never easy. The food bank, however, indicated that it had been more than worth it and the partnership has been an incredible learning experience for everyone involved. So I just wanted to start um, with a story to illustrate um, the topic for today. And I'm going to hand it over now to Greg, who is by training an engineer. <laughs> well, when you think of business process management, you might not initially believe that there could be such relevance to the nonprofit or social services sectors. Uh, but as Susanna pointed out with the New York Food Bank example, BPM can be applied much more broadly than just for profit organizations. You can see on the screen here a couple of definitions of BPM. It's a way of looking at and then controlling the processes that are present in an organization and then making them more efficient. So it consider, considers business processes as strategic assets that need to be understood, managed, and improved um, at improved and added value for clients and stakeholders. Of course, clients can be consumers at a retail store or they could be job seekers seeking support from employment advisors or case managers. The field of business process management is still very new. Uh, only back in 2010, Paul Harmon conceptualized business processes in a pyramid with three levels of initiatives within a, bus within a business organization. So you can see here the pyramid, and on the bottom is the implementation level, which includes a broad set of techniques and technologies used to implement specific activities, for example, human resources and IT. That middle layer is the business process level, and it focuses on specific processes or projects that break down into specific activities that are performed by people and systems. More specifically, they are initiatives focused on projects that seek to create, redesign, or improve specific business process. At the enterprise level, at the very top, is where organizations seek to organize their processes across the entire enterprise, aligning processes with strategies and defining process governance and measurement systems for the entire organization. Focusing on that second layer, 
of the pyramid, there are a handful of key steps in BPM, which are labeled differently in different tools, but can be summarized in the diagram here. So thinking back to the food bank example, Toyota applied a version of these steps to reduce weight and pickup times. They formalize the process, use performance measurements and target setting, analyze each process and made improvements, implemented them and likely didn't get it exactly right in the first try, so identified remaining inefficiencies and found ways to continuously improve. Here is a second example of a business process that might look familiar to many of you out there. This is our impression of the client employment process, and I want to stress the fact that it is our impression. Uh, this business process will look somewhat different at each employment service provider, but there are certainly many elements in common. So don't worry if you're having difficulty reading the different components. We'll break it down over the next few slides. Uh, the key and somewhat striking thing to notice is that it really illustrates how complex this process is when you break it down. Moving from left to right, we see some of the inputs that go into the process, such as funding, knowledge, and expertise. And we begin the process with a job seeker who enters what we've labeled as the triage when they arrive at an employment center for the first time. Even the triage, just this one component, can be quite complex. And we'll take a, a close look at that in a few minutes. The middle section illustrates many of the various employment services and supports that are delivered by case managers, job developers, and others. It includes orientation sessions, career development, and retention services. Again, this may not be a comprehensive list at your organization. It shows uh, also that there are external enablers such as delivery partners like other community agencies and colleges that might provide support in the form of outreach, marketing, and referring of specialized services. Finally, we see some of the opportunities and outcomes from the services provided. Labor market attachment is probably the obvious one, but community attachment and other outcomes can be part of the process as well. And of course, it's not just about getting the job. It's, it's about keeping it and gaining new skills and opportunities which is captured here by sustained employment and career advancement. So when we take a look back at that entire process, it can certainly look daunting, but the key thing to remember is that when you focus on small processes, small changes can lead to big results. And to do that, you need to have data for continuous improvements. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of and applied the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound criteria. And certainly this can also function as an effective yet simple tool when you're looking at redesigning uh, your processes. Now moving on to the triage example that we looked at earlier, you can see that, that just that one component box can be expanded into a number of smaller steps. So you have the welcome and greeting, uh, followed by the registration, and completing forms. Uh, then there's the sorting and um, assessing for resource room or case management. Um, and here is where you, you have uh, in the flow diagram opportunities depending on what the step is. Uh, in this case, if, if the client needs more support, then you might refer them to a case manager who gets to know the client and does an assessment. Uh, and if not, then they, it may be more appropriate that for them to access the resource room where they'll have self-serve access to resources, equipment, and you can monitor them uh, in case they do need case management. And, and that's represented by that arrow that goes back to the case manager, um, followed by some more specific and appropriate case management planning and services. So if you were looking at analyzing this process for inefficiencies, one of the first things you need to do is ask the questions that will give you the data that you need. And I've listed a couple of examples written here on the screen. So one of the questions is you might ask is what percentage of individuals that walk in your door spend time in the resource room? Uh, and then what percentage move on into case management services? What is the average time for clients between reception and their first appointment with the case manager? All questions, or just a small example really, of questions that you might want to ask to give you the data that you need uh, to see where you might find some, some, uh, some efficiencies in your business processes, in this case, the triage. So finding these answers and analyzing the data are part of the business re-engineering process that will make the process more efficient with the aim of generating better employment outcomes for clients. 
Now, even though BPM is a relatively new field, there are existing organizations in Canada, the US, and elsewhere that offer BPM products and services. And a few of them are listed here on the screen. <clears throat> so now that we've looked at a couple of examples of BPM, let's briefly review some of the success factors based on the literature of BPM maturity models. So first you have strategic alignment, uh, which needs to be aligned with the overall strategy. It says BPM needs to be aligned with the overall strategy of an organization. Tight linkage of organizational priorities, priorities and enterprise processes, enabling continual and effective action to improve B, uh, business process performance. BPM governance establishes appropriate and transparent accountability in terms of roles and responsibilities for different levels of BPM. Uh, next, you have uh, methods, um, and we'll just go through them quickly here. Trust, uh, people and relationship building, culture, and information technology. Um, and of course, along with the success factors, there is going to be potential challenges for BPM. So there could be a lack of understanding of what BPM is, um, different focuses on, dis on business process activities, some uh, some folks in the organization may priori prioritize certain business processes over others. There's performance indicators, organizational capacity, and limited capacity for evaluation sometimes. So here at the center, you can see the approach here on the screen. We were interested in further examining the role of BPM in the nonprofit sector. And the approach that we took mm -hmm. is that we conduct conducted a literature review and an environmental scan of selected sources including review of websites, three key informant interviews with organizations that are providing business management support to nonprofit organizations or public agencies. And here are some of the key findings that came out of that literature review and scan. So you can see supporting improvements to business processes in nonprofit, or in nonprofit organizations appears to be a promising idea. Studies suggest BPM has made improvements to business processes and organizational capacity. And indeed, if these changes occur, then it should lead to better services for the client or customer and outcomes and free up time for higher value work using the, change, the theory of change. So the concept looks good on paper, but like many things, it will have challenges in its implementation and uh, the devil will be in the details. So based on these recommendations, we move forward with the Strengthening Organizational Capacity Initiative with the objectives to develop a prototype model based on good practices, including an implementation plan. For example, partnerships, governance, eligibility, activities, and timelines, and an evaluation strategy for the next phase to conduct a small scale pilot test or feasibility study. The main activities took place from September 2014 uh, until recently this February, where we held three workshops with leaders of nonprofit organizations delivering employment services in regions throughout BC who came together to collectively design a model to support BPM in the sector. The initiative also functioned as a platform to share and learn in a community of practice, and in this case it was around business process management. And now it's my pleasure to turn the mic over to Tim who will let you know more about what happened in the workshops that he facilitated. Uh, thank you, Gray. Uh, this is the point at which I got involved in the project. And uh, it was a great pleasure working with uh, a group of 10 individuals from the field who uh, came to Vancouver for th the three workshops. Uh, there were people from uh, three folks from Vancouver Island one from the north, one from the North Okanagan, and five from the Lower Mainland, each representing a different organization that is providing uh, specialized employment services. Um, as Greg said, we had uh, workshops in October, December, and January, and the next several slides are going to sort of demonstrate what we did in those workshops and provide uh, listeners today with uh, a summary of the, the findings. I know that several people who were in our workshops are on the on the webinar today, so hi folks, it's a pleasure working with you. So in the first workshop in October, the group developed four 
kind of approaches that they have used or would like to use in looking at their business practices. We're going to cover each of these in a slide later. So this is just a list of uh, community of practice, uh, <clears throat> online tools and resources, individual or group consultation, and a facilitated approach uh, using peer groups. So uh, after this workshop, we, we took this uh, list to the ASPECT conference in November in, uh, in Victoria. And we tested and uh, uh, we tested these models out on I don't know I think about 50 or 60 people in the room, and uh, got a good result. So the the group moved forward. I'm going to cover those now those four items in a little bit more detail, and you don't have to read this quickly because you can access the uh, written copy later. Um, Communities of practice, many of you would have heard of this and participated in this in some way, shape, or form. But essentially, it's a group of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact uh, iteratively and regularly over time. Um, communities of practice are really great at connecting people in the spirit of learning, sharing knowledge about effective business practice, exploring issues and innovative solutions and fostering collaborations. And any time that people who are operating in communities of practice online, um, in-person meetings and forums and so on, uh, help build the community of practice. You're all, I'm sure, familiar with resources and tools online. I'm not going to cover this in too much detail. Um, many websites provide tools and resources, and I'm sure most of you use them. And the group um, looked at that as a way for the center to move forward with uh, assisting with, um, with employment services generally. Um, one of the things that is difficult with online uh, tools and resources is to measure how effective they are, to actually uh, get feedback on the various tools some of them can be uh, very slick and user friendly, but may not have a good outcome and so on. So you don't know what these tools actually do unless you use them. The, uh, and this is the most common way that folks are acquiring support for looking at business practices, hiring an individual independent consultant or team to come and work with the organization identify solutions, enhance learning, implement changes, and so on. Um, this is a normal way to do it. The group also talked about uh, getting groups of specialized service provide employment service providers together, say on the North Island, the South Island, the North Okanagan, the North, the Kootenays, or the Lower Mainland, and to look at a group of organizations hiring a consultant to come and work with them if they have common problems to work on, or problem uh, complementary business solutions that they're looking at. The fourth one, a facilitated approach using a peer group, the group felt it was important to include peers, uh, that you learn a lot from working with peers. Um, these are generally processes where there's a um, there's ex people with experience in a particular business area. There's a good, strong facilitation focus uh, using a standardized approach, a rigorous method to examine, analyze, find the critical data, and then use the peer group as a learning group uh, to learn from each other and identify solutions to their issues in a common way. This also helps spread uh, knowledge across various organizations and People can take back home what they learn in working together in a peer group. So those were the four models that were developed by the um, by the group that we worked with. And in the uh, was it the second workshop? It was the second workshop where we took each of these models and we weighted. Uh, we the group developed a list of sixteen weighting factors, and I'll, I'll briefly highlight those for you. Uh, you'll also find these in the material that's available online afterwards. But things like the cost and ease of administration, 
how easy it is to set up and actually do one of these, the capacity to the the ca capacity building that would go on. In other words, the transfer of knowledge uh, to the uh, the uh, business process folks away from or from external consultants or peer groups or the community of practice, how much knowledge is actually transferred and builds capacity of the organization. The potential for improvement of efficiency and effectiveness of business practices, the effectiveness in getting to a solution, the congruence of each of these practices with the organizational values that are embedded in the group providing the services, the staff time required, and so on. So, the group took each of these four and using a kind of a ranking model applied these uh, weighting factors to each of the models. And in the end, um, we came out with a slide that looks like the one you're looking at on the screen. Um, the group we worked with identified the community of practice as probably the most overall effective process that using group facilitation methods is also a, a good um, method to use. Uh, the resources and tools online fell a little bit, as did the individual management and or group consultation. Now, noting that all four of these methods are good methods, effective and from different times and places, but I think for the purposes of the center carrying out uh, the next steps in a project, um, number one and number two were the ones that we then focused on and uh, that's going to be the next slide and back to you Greg. Thanks. Okay. Thanks Tim. So just a, a quick note about the rankings here. You can see that um, resources and tools was both third and fourth and then individual management and group consultation started out at fourth and then moved to third. We actually re-ranked all of these uh, all of these different models after the initial 16 weighting factors were chosen, we asked the group which of those factors were the most uh, important to them. That reduced the, the, the criteria or the factors down to seven, and we re-ranked re them. Community of practice and facilitated approach after that re-ranking actually came quite close together in the final rankings in terms of the, the, the final tally. Um, and that is uh, part of the methodology we use um, with the learnings from the group and the, the input from the group to come up with the model that we called BizHub. So here it is. This is the resulting model that the group developed. It is an original model and it's developed from those two approaches, the community of practice and the facilitated approach. And it's aimed at supporting business process improvements for nonprofit organizations that deliver employment services to specialized populations. The model provides the foundation for how to support um, for how the service, sorry, the, ser the support and services will operate to facilitate and address business process management issues encountered by participating organizations. More specifically, it will identify and create opportunities to improve business efficiency and processes with the ultimate aim of achieving better employment outcomes for clients, including both job seekers and employers. So one way to view BizHub is as a hub and spoke model. So the figure here shows a graphic representation of the BizHub model, where all participating organizations will form the main hub, which is the central gathering place to exchange new knowledge and evidence created by the subhubs. The main hub extends to several subhubs in a coordinated and collaborative manner. The relationship between the main and subhubs is two-way, as you can see by the double uh, arrows on each of those uh, lines from the main hub to the sub hub. And each sub hub focuses on a specific business process problem and brings a subgroup from participating agencies in the main hub together at regular intervals to learn together, use the BPM methodology to address the business process problems and engage peers in a dialogue to identify improvements implement the changes, and document the learning. Subhubs operate concurrently, and activities in each subhub are intended to work towards meeting a stated business goal. And importantly, they're supported by 
a facilitator and or a subject matter expert in that business process. The findings and lessons learned in the sub hubs are then fed back to the main hub for general consumption and wider dissemination. I really want to emphasize that the model that the group developed looks to be extremely promising and certainly very suitable for the target group and definitely worth testing. So again, who is the target group or the target population? Well, the clients uh, for BizHub are nonprofit organizations in BC that provide employment services to specialized populations who have a common interest in pursuing operational efficiency. Other stakeholders, such as for-profit organizations and government, also have interest in improving business process management, of course, in the employment services sector. And it's therefore expected that participation will be expanded to these agencies as appropriate and warranted for each sub, each sub hub and dependent on the business process being uh, evaluated or being analyzed in each sub hub. So next we have a list of the values and principles you can see here that were, these were identified also by the BPM working group members. So I'll just read the list here. Um, building and using evidence to improve business processes. Being client focused, that was one that came up over and over again in the workshops that they needed to be ultimately focused on the job seeker or the client. Recognizing that people in the organization are its most important resource. A willingness to share and exchange best practices, challenges and opportunities openly honoring organizational diversity, and learning by doing. Some of the strengths and features of the model are listed here. Um, and I just want to say that although the proposed model integrated selected best or known practices, uh, these, were, these were the strengths that came out also by the group. Uh, so here are the factors. A focus on client outcomes and not just on operational efficiency. It's unique in being a pilot test. We haven't seen anything else like this. Uh, it aims to create an adaptive learning community. It involves a lot of peer-to-peer -peer problem solving, learning and capacity building, and it builds on others' experiences and expertise to share knowledge and expertise across the collaborative. So there you have a brief overview of the initiative and the BizHub model. And I'm going to now pass the mic back over to Susanna to talk about next steps and wrap up the presentation. Now, I just want to remind folks out there that it's a great time to type in your questions. And we'll take a closer look at those um, shortly. So I'll pass it over to you, Susanna. Thank you, Greg and Tim. Um, I think we, we're kind of practicing efficiency here, too, and kind of looking at the process for the webinar. I don't think we've ever been this lean, I think, and finishing, um, getting everything very succinct and, um, and actually early. Um, I'm very glad we did the workshops because um, like any initiative, sometimes when you get surprised by the results, it's always great. I wasn't quite sure what the model we were gonna come up with at our first workshop and a little bit nervous about it too, but I think organically the group, they were great to work with really engaging a lot of thinking and problem solving and I think the model that developed um, is, it is organic and it's actually something um, as Greg has mentioned really worth um, testing. I'm going to talk briefly about what's next. Um, besides the work that was done in the initiative we are currently trying to develop a very brief overview on BPM, what it is, you know, the um, circle that was shown earlier on an earlier um, diagram, the different steps, and maybe having a tool that will allow people to kind of dive into that a little bit more. So really about raising awareness as this is a, um, a methodology, and then potentially maybe engage in further participation in the process. We will be posting the report from the Strengthening Business Processes Initiative on our website to next month. We will also make available the um, literature review and environmental scan results at the same time. As we mentioned um, to the group we worked with, we, um, we were going to be seeking funding for right. testing the pilot. 
and we have made an application to the Ministries Community Employer Partnership Research and Innovation Fund to test a model in a pilot project. And the three main, um, and of course we're researchers, so and it is a research and innovation fund. So we focused on three research questions for that pilot. Um, the first one being, what did the model deliver and to what effect did it achieve its intended results? We also want to dissect a little bit on the models. What are the key features and what are the inherent value of each of these features? So for example, um, there's a component we built into the model where there would be training for facilitation and some, some on BAPM for the leads in the sub hub. And these leads, the facilitator and the subject expert will be coming from the, um, the nonprofit sector, the target population, so that this knowledge is, will be um, enhanced and built within the, the sector so that it can actually carry on the work in the longer run if, it's, if um, the results from this project uh, finds it to be um, effective. The third question was a question we struggled with when we looked at the literature review. There was very little that um, measured and also demonstrated the effectiveness of this process, this approach on client outcomes. So we would be looking at some of these business processes, the work at each of the sub-hubs, and designing a methodology um, for that case study to actually try to link the work for the process to client outcomes to see if we can see what impacts this um, having um, better, you know, working on BPM would have on client outcomes. And then the next slide, um, we didn't talk very much about what these sub-hub topics are. We did some work on that with the group and some of the um, sub-hub topics that came up were on mental health, job development, case management. Um, Greg, can you think of other ones? There were about a list of seven or eight. We wanted to be flexible um, because it's a pilot. We limited the sub-hubs to four. We want to populate the topics for maybe two or three of these sub-hubs with topics that came up from the working group. However, we want to be also flexible in case we missed anything important um, and would be you know, discussing among the participants at the main hub what other um, processes would be key. So that's the question we want to throw out here today and also um, with our exit poll. Are there, what sub-hub topic or topics would be meaningful to you and your organization? Um, what would be something that would then engage, you know, for you to participate in not just initiative, but maybe be an active member in the sub-hub? So maybe we'll just take a minute for folks to uh, type in either, well, let's use the question box, what uh, some of these topics, now that you have a bit of a better idea of what the model looks like, what some of these sub-hub topics uh, would be or that you'd like, would you like to be on behalf of your organization. And also I want to encourage those who are online right now who participated in the workshops, um, one, thank you very much for all the t your time and your contributions, but also there were things that we missed out um, in the presentation about the work we did. Uh, please feel free to um, to, to make a comment, and so forth. Okay. Yeah. We just got a note that um, in the last few minutes when I was talking, it was a bit staticky and Hopefully that's um, the audio problem has resolved itself and I'm coming through clear again. But if not, please let us know. And while you're busy out there thinking of some potential topics, uh, I'll just take a minute to name some of those processes that were identified with the BPM working group. So Susanna mentioned a few of these. Um, one would be focused on a specific target group like mental health. Uh, geographic issues is another one. 
employer engagement was one that came up, customized employment, case management, uh, the employment continuum, so similar to that employment process diagram that you saw earlier, change management and implementation, and new staff training. Just going to add also, I think in the environmental scan we did, um, and a survey by Accenture of leaders in the nonprofits, they were finding that quite often um, the leads or the organizations focus very much on fundraising and some of the individual success stories, but not so much maybe on operational efficiencies. And so there's really a focus again in different organizations. Um, um, like Bridge, some of the organizations, the um, Bridge Span, um, the Endeavor, um, and other areas, in trying to promote some of this philosophy and this focus. Okay. I'm not sure what's happening with our sand. We apologize. It's been kind of going in and out, and. Um, And yes, I am very close to our mic, so we're not quite sure what's happening. Um, but maybe I can just, yeah. If you've got questions, please um, send them in now or maybe even later and make sure you answer our poll. But we're probably going to maybe finish a little bit earlier today. And again, the report is going to be posted as well as our slides, and we welcome any suggestions you have. Um, and Greg, Tim, did you have any last words? Or well, it was really fun working with the group. <laughs> That's my, and I think the uh, the project has a good platform to jump off of, and, it, and it'll do well. Right. And if you can hear me, um, if the funding comes through and we're going to be starting this, we're going to be um, sending invitations to people to part with more information and also to participate um, in, in the initiative, either in the main hub or both the main hub and the sub hub. Right. So we had one, one uh, idea that was mentioned by one of our participants out there. And she's saying that in uh, specific to the employment program at BC, there seems to be a number of questions around the difference between customized employment and job development and who is eligible for what. Yeah, good, good point. So we'll make note of that one. Right. Thank you. And another comment, um, and potentially maybe forwarding ideas for topics for the sub hubs once um, the participant gets a chance to look at the report um, first, um, we'll probably we could actually it's ready. We might post that um, earlier than later, so that's a good suggestion. And I'm sorry, I'm I know my sat my voice is breaking up again, so I am going to wrap up. Um, and hopefully, you'll this will come through. We like to thank everyone for attending. Um, the session was recorded. And we will post a video of the presentation and the slides on our website. I think this is a bit of a, a transformation too. So, um, and I know for me, um, when I started first doing process research, I had to kind of um, think about it and what it really meant in terms of um, employment as well. But as always, we welcome your input and feedback. And if you have a suggestion or an idea for a future webinar topic, we would love to talk to you. So before you leave the webinar, you will be asked to complete a short survey. We would appreciate it if you take a minute or two to share your thoughts, as your feedback will be very helpful for us in planning future events and also about thinking about some of these sub -hubs. And next month, our webinar is on the map. Sharing positive experiences with inclusive employment. We 
there will be a date. We haven't set the final date yet, but we will send an announcement shortly. And as usual, you can sign up for the webinar through our website. So that ends our event today. And on behalf of Tim, Greg, and Sean, who's been helping here, um, thank you very much for participating in today's discussion and 